remember when beauty said, I love you to the beast? His ugliness dissolved, changed like magic, but you see, I'm still the same. Let no one help me. No one is coming. I feel already shod with marble, gloved with lead. Here lies Hercule de Sauvignon, de Cyrano de Bergerac. I can see him there. He grins. Death. He's looking at my nose. That skeleton. What's that you say? Hopeless. You there! Who are you, a hundred against one? I know them now. My ancient enemies. Falsehood. There. There. Prejudice. Cowardice. Compromise. You too. Vanity. I knew you'd overthrow me in the end. Now, I fight on. I fight on. One thing, unspotted from the world, in spite of doom, I know. And that is. Oh. That is. My white pew. Fascinating play. I love that play. Couldn't you choose something a little more demanding? Well, you see, Harry would be a terrific Stanley. Yeah, where are we going to find a Stella? I can answer that. I was born to play Stella. <laughs> what do you think, Doris? I think it's a wonderful play. Good. When do you want to have auditions? I'm sorry to tell you this, but I'm not going to direct this one. What? Doris. No, no, no. no, I mean it. Mama's been sick, and I'm not oh. going to have the time. Besides, it's ruining my social life. Well, I... Uh, Doris, Doris, no. No. After all, it's time that the club developed some other directors. I'm not going to live forever. But you well, can't Doris, quit. Who else can do it? Right. Doris isn't directing? No, no dear boy. Well, who else can direct? Excuse me. Andrew, give me a hand. Great. I finally get her primed up to give me the lead, and now I have to start buttering up somebody else. Attention, everybody! I want to thank you all for coming out and supporting the North Crawford Mask and Wig Club. <laughs> and I, I especially want to thank all of my fellow thespians, Selma and Minnie, Andrew, Albert, Lydia, George, Les, and, of course, our star, who unfortunately couldn't join us tonight, Harry Nash. Our next production is going to be A Streetcar Named Desire. Wow. And, by popular demand, the director will be George Johnson. George Johnson! Oh. Oh. Hi, Phoebe. Hi, Elmer. Hi, Marilyn. How are you? Hi, George. 
Hey, Jack, how you doing? Uh, excuse me. Uh, miss. Good morning, sir. May I help you? Oh, yeah, I hope so. Uh, uh, miss, I got this charge on my telephone bill for a long distance call to Hon for a long distance call to Honolulu. Uh, I don't think anyone in North Crawford has ever called Honolulu, or ever will, for that matter. I'm very <laughs> sorry, sir. The company's just installed new automatic billing machines, and we don't have all the bugs out yet. Oh. Occasionally, they make mistakes. I'll take this charge right off your bill. Oh, now, that's a relief. I thought I was going to have a real hassle getting this thing straightened out. You know, I've dealt with those computers before. Oh, no, sir. This will just take a second. If you can wait, I'll give you a credit memo. I haven't seen you around North Crawford before, have I? No, sir. I just arrived with the new automatic billing machines. Well, that's an improvement. <laughs> yeah, I guess as long as people come along with the machines, then uh, we've got nothing to worry about. It's it's when the machines start delivering themselves that uh, that uh, people had better start worrying. Oh. Uh. Uh, excuse me. Um, have you have you ever acted? What do you do with the machine? I teach the local girls how to operate them. Ah. How long are you going to be in North Crawford? I stay in each place eight weeks, sir. Then I take a new machine to a new town. See, the reason I'm asking is, uh, well, I've got this idea. You see, we're, we're having auditions for our dramatic club. We're doing a new play. And uh, why don't you come over? There's a part near that would be perfect for you. I've been going from town to town for two years. That's the very first time anyone has ever approached me about participating in a community thing. There isn't any other way to get to know a lot of nice people faster than being in a play. Uh, my name is George Johnson. Oh. <laughs> Plain Shaw. Oh, so nice to meet you. Anyway, the auditions are, are this Saturday. We'd all like you to come. They're at the school library, 12 o'clock sharp. Well, I, I just might show up and surprise you. Oh. And myself. Hi, Clyde. Whoa. George. Oh, yeah. Oh, George, hi, Albert. Glad I caught you. Oh, yeah, I'm in a hurry. I've got to show you. Oh, yeah, but I'm in a hurry, Wait, Albert. What? Stella! Oh, Lord. Oh, hey, listen, I'm, I'm glad you're working Wait, so hard on the character, else. Albert. You see. Eunice, I want oh. my girl to come down with me. Oh, listen, Eunice, listen, I can I, do I, it. I, 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 uh, we're just kidding around, folks. Just kidding around. <laughs> Let's I, do it loud. I already told you, Harry's playing Stanley, all right? I admit here he's pretty good and all that, but there are some parts others are better suited to play. Okay, now, listen to me, Albert. In the past year, Harry has played Captain Quig. He's played Abe Lincoln. He's played the young architect in, uh, in The Moon is Blue. He's played Doc in Comeback Little Sheba. And he's played Cyrano de Bergerac. That's a pretty good cross-section, wouldn't you say, Albert? I've had a few credits, too, you know. Oh, I know. Listen, I got to go, Albert. I really do. Harry? Harry? Bird? Lydia, anybody? Harry? Oh, Harry! <clears throat> Fern and Lydia aren't here, George. Oh, well, I, I really came to see you, Harry. Uh, hey, um... That was uh, some fine performance last night, Harry. Fern and Lydia aren't. Oh, uh, uh, Anyway, I, I suppose you've heard about the, uh, the next play. <laughs> they asked me to direct, Harry. Uh, and I, I, I know you've only worked with Doris before, uh, so I hope that isn't a problem. Uh, You've seen me act, Harry. Uh, directing can only be a step up, you know? <laughs> that club needs you, Harry. I mean, uh, actually, I need you, Harry. I don't even know if I can direct traffic, let alone a play. Would you consider playing the lead in this one, Harry? Who am I this time? Uh, 
I'm not sure it would have made any difference where, where I saw him. Now, don't say it was one of those mysterious electric things between people. If you do, I'll laugh right in your face. I am not going to say anything more at all about it. All right, then, don't. But there are things that happen between uh, a man uh, uh, many, and a... Many thanks. That's, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank uh, George, are you going to have my uh, storm windows ready next week? You know, the least expensive ones we talked about? Uh, the, uh, the plain aluminum triple track. Right, yeah, I'll have, I'll have it taken care of. Yeah. Minnie, you want to send the next one in for me? Right. Sure, thanks, George. Right. Yeah. Oh, we've got our blanches. Oh, it's always smash things. Why on wedding night? Kind of on your high horse, ain't you? Well, I ought to go home pretty soon. Shut up! I got a sick mother. She don't want to sleep until I get She said to go home. I don't enjoy it. Oh Next. Come in. Harry? You told me you were having tryouts. Uh, yeah, but I didn't mean you, Harry. Now, George, don't you think Harry should get a chance, just like all the others? No favorites. Right, Harry? Oh, yeah, you're, you're absolutely right, Doris. Yeah. If you don't mind waiting a while, Harry, uh, why don't you go out in the hall and study your scripts some more, okay? Thanks. Harry, did you happen to see a, a pretty new girl out there? I didn't notice. Oh, it's amazing. He always acts like there's some doubt he's going to get a part in the play. I wouldn't care if he auditions standing on his head as long as he keeps on giving us those performances of his. Yeah, but I can't even get a two-way conversation going with him. Oh, Miss Shaw. Hi. Hi. Excuse me, Doris. Come on in. Oh, am I delighted to see you. Well, I told you that I might surprise both of us. Well, I'm delightfully surprised. Come on in. Come on in here. Uh, Doris, I'm, I'm sorry, what's your first name again? Helene. I want you to meet Helene Shaw. I thought she'd be Hello, perfect. Uh, perfect for the part of Stella, right? Yeah. Oh, Ed, listen. Why don't you just read uh, the this, this scene here, okay? And uh, Doris will read the part of Blanche. Mm -hmm. All right? Go ahead. I'm not sure it would have made any difference where I met him. If you say it was one of those mysterious electric things between people, I'll laugh right in your face. I'm not going to say anything more at all about it. All right, then, don't. But there are things that happen between a man and a woman in the dark that sort of make everything else seem unimportant. Helene, dear. Passion. Passion, Helene. Stella is a very passionate girl. She needs someone like Stanley in order to feel alive. The animal in him excites her. I'll try it again. Please, with a little more feeling. Now, pretend George is Stanley and that you love him very passionately. On second thought, just try to imagine Stanley. Now, let's take it from where we left off. What you are talking about is brutal desire. Just desire. The name of that rattle-trap old streetcar that bangs through the quarter, up one old narrow street and down another. <laughs> well, all right, dear. Read the lines. Oh, yeah. Um, haven't you ever ridden that streetcar? It brought me here, where I'm not wanted and where I'm ashamed to be. Then don't you think your superior altitude is a bit out of place? That's attitude, dear. Oh, oh, yes. Attitude. I am not being or feeling at all superior, Stella. Believe me, it's just this. This is the way I look at it. A man like that is someone to go out with once, twice, three times when the devil is in you. But live with? Have a child by? I have told you I love him. Uh, Helene. Uh, excuse me, Doris. Uh, may I ask you a personal question? All right. Have you ever been in love? What I was thinking is that if you remember some old love, you know, that you had, then it might help to bring some warmth into your acting. Well, I travel around a lot, you know, and, um, Practically all the men in the companies that I visit, they're all married, and I'm never in town long enough to meet any of the people who aren't. Uh, what about s school? Uh, 
I like puppy love and all the other kinds of love in school. Even in school, I moved around a lot because my father was a construction worker and he was always following jobs around and I was always saying hello or goodbye to someplace. Um, would movie stars count? I mean, not in real life. I never met any, but I mean, to step on the screen? I guess that's love of a kind. Because I used to sit through movies over and over again, you know, and pretend that I was married to whoever the, the man movie star was. Mm -hmm. They were the only people that ever went with us. You know, no matter where we went, those movie stars were always there. Yeah, well, uh, listen, uh, thanks, Aline. It's, thank you for coming by, and, and we'll let you know what we decide, all right? Thanks very much for letting me try out. Oh, you're welcome, dear. You finally find your Stella, and it turns out she doesn't know what love is. Aline, <laughs> what's the matter, dear? I'm terrible, aren't I? No, no, you're not. You're fine. <laughs> no, I'm not. It was awful. I, you would believe... Like I was a walking icebox or something. No. Oh, nobody could look at you and say that, dearie. <laughs> when people will get to know me, that's when they do say it. I don't want to be the way that I am. I just can't help it. I feel like I'm in... Well, when I get to know somebody nice, you know, and like, like in real life, I feel like I'm in... I am in some kind of a, a bottle, as though I can't touch that person no matter how hard I try. I know what this play's about. I know what Stella's feeling. I, I know why she feels it. I just, I, I... You what, dear? I, I just, I don't know how to begin. Oh, oh Helene. Are you ready for me yet, George? Oh. Is nobody else outside? Harry, come here. I'm, I'm sorry I kept you waiting, Harry. Excuse me. Uh, Harry, th this is Helene Shaw. Helene, this is Harry Nash. Uh, now, if you get the part of Stella, he'll be your husband in the play. Say, I, uh, I wonder if, uh, if you two would read a scene for me from this play, right? Right here. Do that? Sure! Huh? If Stella's game. Huh? Stella! Stella! That's you! Stella's my wife. In. What is this? A solid gold dress, I believe. And this? What is these here? Fox pieces? Genuine fox fur pieces are half a mile long. No, those are inexpensive summer furs that um, Blanche has had a, a long time. I got an acquaintance who deals in this sort of merchandise. I'll have him here to appraise it. I'm willing to bet you there's thousands of dollars invested in this stuff here. Don't be such an idiot, Stanley. And this, what is this here? The treasure chest of a pirate? Stanley. Pearls. Ropes of them. What is this sister of yours, a deep sea diver? Shh, be still, Stanley. And diamonds. A crown for an empress. It's a rhinestone tiara she wore to a costume ball. Are you kidding? I got an acquaintance who works in a jewelry store. I'll have him in here to appraise this. Here's our plantation. Or what's left of it, here. You have no idea how stupid and horrid you're being. Now close that trunk before she comes out of the bathroom. Now I'm gonna go outside and I want you to come with me while Blanche is getting dressed. Since when you give me orders? Are you gonna stay here and insult her? You damn tootin' I'm gonna stay here. You are not, you, you animal! Animal? Yes! I'll teach you! I'll... Animal! You! Don't you dare call me names! I'll call you what 
what I like. No, you won't, and you just keep Stop your head it. off of ah! Don't you get me either? Fruit, you, you monster! Let get them rush over you, but George! <gasps> what do you want? Ah! Oh, yes, Miss Galford. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, we're, we're finished. Uh, there won't be any more noise. I'm very sorry. Was that all right? Oh, uh, for first reading, that, that wasn't too bad, Harry. Yeah. Is there a chance to get the part? Uh, I think we can safely say that we're we're leaning powerfully in your direction, Harry. Aline. Miss Shaw. Uh, the part of Stella is yours. You were just great. I had no idea you had that much fire in you. Skyrockets, pinwheels, Roman candles. Uh, Aline. You have my permission to go. He's certainly not in that bottle anymore. He's okay now. I'll show my boys all right. Put him on the bed and get a wet towel. I think coffee would do him world of good. Oh, my! Uh, cold shower. Let the knock on me, you son of a bitch! Wait. Bang! Uh, let's get the hell out of here. Poker should not be played in a house with women. Good, 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 good. Harry and Aline, listen. If you say something for the actual performance, you're gonna burn yourselves out, all right? You're gonna burn yourselves out. Okay, I'll see you at seven tomorrow night. All right. All right? Okay. Uh, good rehearsal. Oh. Yes, what is it? Lydia, do we have a play or do we have a play? What play? There isn't any play going on now. What? Hey, you! You through with me? What? Can I go home now? Sure, Harry, yeah. You aren't directing this play, George. What, do you, what are you saying? What do you mean I'm not directing this play? Who is? Mother Nature at her worst. What's going to happen to that girl when she discovers what Harry really is? Oh, what Harry really isn't. I tell the phone company that I don't want to be moved around anymore. Really? Mm-hmm. What do you think about that? Oh. What do I think? Well, as mm -hmm. club director, I'd say I'm very glad. Club director? What about George Johnson? Oh, well, I'd say, should you make that kind of decision now? George, I feel like my life is just beginning. I've never been this happy. Does Harry know you decided to uh, stay? He's totally preoccupied with learning his lines and getting into his role and everything. 
And if he gets any further into his role, he'll never get out of it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if I had a daughter, I'd want her to be just like you. She's just so sweet. Well, thank you, but I mean it. If I was your daughter, what advice would you give me? Oh, advice? I'd... I just want you to have what you want to have. Really, that's it. Good night. Night. All right, now, when, uh, when Lydia says, uh, what? Uh, what is it? Is it for me? Yeah, what is it? Is it for me? Then, Hel Helene, dear, please pay attention, all right? Then, Helene, you come down here at that point. And Stanley, uh, Harry, you go over there, please, okay? Okay, let's see, what else? What else is there? Uh, I think I hear a bit of an earthquake. I wonder if... Oh, that must be Albert's stomach grumbling. Okay, let's break. Okay, everybody, that's 20 minutes for lunch. 20 minutes. Oh, yeah, oh okay. Uh, you know, Helene, as the leading actors, we should really get to know one another better. A friend of mine said, Stanislaus, he says... Uh, not right now, Albert. You think you're moving to another town or anything? Oh, yes, I did. Yes, I did. May I join you? Sure. You've got to do something. Don't make it. Would you, would you maybe like one of these? No, go ahead. Really. Some nice hot soup. Okay? All right. I mean, you really, you should eat much better meals, Harry. You know, you have to keep up your energy. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you know, if, if um, I were to stay a little bit longer in, in North Crawford, I'd be very glad to make you some really good meals. I, I mean, if, if you, if you'd like me to, I know how you men are about your mom's cooking and everything. Um, <laughs> my mom was a wonderful cook. She taught me how to cook when I was just a little girl. I bet your mom's a great cook, huh? No. Oh, come on. I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? Unitarian Church. On the steps? We told. No, um, well, there's still. Take that. But don't. This is. Well, this is terrible! Unity is an immunity! Do it! What? I'm not going to hell, man! God, kill me! I want to get out of here! I want to get out of here! Girls should not be played in a house with women! I want my sister's clothes! We'll go to that woman upstairs! Where are the clothes? Okay, great, 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 great! Lydia, leap up on that line. Leap up and move. Helene, magnificent. Uh, okay, this, uh, do not block him, all right? Okay, thank you. It looks fantastic. We got a hit. Uh. Everybody be here. 6.30 on Thursday. Got it?
These evening rehearsals are tiring, aren't they? <laughs> How are you and Harry getting along, Helene? Mm -hmm. Harry. You know, Helene, I once played Anne Rutledge opposite Harry. He was Abraham Lincoln. Oh, that must have been heaven. It was, in a way. Sometimes I get so caught up, I'd love Harry like I'd love Abraham Lincoln. I'd have to come back to Earth and remind myself that he wasn't ever going to free the slaves. That he was just a clerk in my husband's hardware store. He's the most marvelous man I've ever met. One thing you have to get set for when you're in a play with Harry is what happens after the last performance. What are you talking about? Once the play is over, whatever you thought Harry was just evaporates into thin air. <laughs> oh, I don't believe you. Well, I admit it's hard to believe. What are you telling me for? Why do you think that I care? I don't know. I just thought you might find it interesting. Well, I don't.
see you later. I'm gonna see you. Helene! What did I do wrong? Did I insult him or something? Oh, no! No, he does that after every performance. The minute that curtain comes down, he clears out. He's gone. That's what we've been trying to tell you. What about Saturday? Will I go to the cast party? Oh, no. Harry never goes to parties. Never. No, he... Helene, you were terrific! Listen, when that curtain comes down, that's the last anybody's gonna see of him until he turns up for work on Monday. How long has he been this way? As long as I can remember. Sad. Good night, Helene. <laughs> Thanks, Andy. Good night. Thanks, Leo. Okay. I'm sure glad when your club starts a new play. Why? The profits always jump. Oh, poor Harry. I saw you in the play last night. Stanley, you were great. Just great. You can come break my plates anytime, Stanley. <laughs> oh. Hello? Harry? Can I help you? Something? Can you help me? Um, uh, yes, I was, um, uh, I'm looking for a pot holder. That's a nice one. Get it. Uh, no, Harry, um, I'm really sorry about the other night. I asking you about your mother, really, I didn't know. It's okay. No, really, I, I I'm very sorry. I... I understand now why... Why you're so shy. I, you know, I'm... I'm really... Uh, I'm really a very... Ah, uh, I'm really a, a very shy person, too. I mean, if, um, if George hadn't asked me to audition, I never would have met you. And, I mean, you're... You're really the, the person who's helped me to overcome my fear. performance goes anything like this, I won't be able to show my face on the street. I don't know how the town will survive, Albert. What's all this stuff? <laughs> Honey, it's Blanche's birthday. Honey, it's, it's Blanche's birthday. Is she here? Well, she's in the bathroom. <sighs> Soaking in a hot tub? I, um, yeah, I, I reckon so. Temperature's 100 degrees on her nose, and she soaks in a hot tub. I reckon so. She says it cools her off. She says it cools her off for the evening. <laughs> ah. Please. 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 Please.
Look, girls, I don't think you should bother Harry today. Oh. Harry! Is everything all right, Harry? What's wrong with Harry? Nothing a good psychiatrist couldn't cure. <laughs> Take me to the gas party. Not much on parties. Well, then, um, look, I'll let you go if you just promise me one thing. What's that? Will you promise you to stay here? Just for a second, I'm gonna go run and get your present. Present? Yeah. You promise? Okay. You sure? Harry, you really were standing on that real good. Sorry. You were both wonderful. Oh, Doris, thank you. Congratulations. Thanks. Oh, uh, no, no, you have to open it. Please. Wow. Harry Nash. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Um, the, the 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 markers at my favorite scene. Uh huh. Did you want to know what my favorite scene is? Sure. Good. <sighs> What's in a name? That which we call a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. So Romeo would, were he not Romeo called, retain that dear perfection which he owes without that title. Romeo, doff thy name and for thy name which is no part of thee, take all myself. Look what Romeo says. You want to read what Romeo says? I take thee. That's what? What's the first thing? What? Sam. I take thee at thy word. <laughs> Call me but love, yeah. and I'll be new baptized. Henceforth. Well, what man art thou that thus bescreened and light so stumblest on my counsel? By a name I know not how to tell thee who I am. My name, dear saint, is hateful to myself because it is an enemy to thee. My ears have yet not drunk a hundred words of thy tongue's utter, and yet I know the sound. Art thou not Romeo and a Montague? Neither. Fair saint, if either thee dislike. How camest thou hither? Tell me. 
And wherefore, the orchard walls are high and hard to climb, and the place death, considering who thou art, if any of my kinsmen find thee here. With love's light wings did I o'er perch these walls. With love's light wings did I o'er perch these walls. The stony limits cannot hold love out, and what love can do, that dares love attempt. Therefore thy kinsmen are no stop to me. <laughs> I've never seen such a change with anybody in my life. They share a creating a stir around here. This town could use some stirring. <laughs> oh, hey, Don. Hi, Bert. Oh, I see doing? Lydia's got you back working for a living, yeah. huh? What happened, Harry quit? No, he's taking inventory. Oh, good. I want to talk to him about the new play. Uh, Harry? Hey, uh, how are the lovebirds, by the way? Oh, those two are floating around in a pink cloak. What else did you expect? Oh, oh hi, Helene. Hi. hi. I was just in the neighborhood. I thought maybe Harry might be... Oh, uh, Harry! Hi. Charming day. Miss Fairfax. Pray don't talk to me about the weather, Mr. Worthing. Um, whenever people talk to me about the weather, I'm quite certain they mean something else. They do. <clears throat> mean something else. I thought so. Yeah. Miss mm. Fairfax, ever since I met you, I've admired you more than any girl I ever met since I met you. Yes, I'm quite aware of that fact. And my ideal has always been to love... Someone with the name Ernest. I mean, there's something in that name that inspires absolute confidence. Do you mean... you love me, too? Gwendolyn. Passionately. My own Ernest. But you don't mean to say that you couldn't love me if my name wasn't Ernest. But your name is Ernest. But yes, I know. It is. But supposing it was something else. Do you mean to say you couldn't love me then? But that's clearly metaphysical speculation. I must say, I, I think there are lots of other much nicer names. Harry, for instance. That's a charming name. Harry. No, there's very little music in the name Harry, if any at all. It does not thrill. We must get christened at once. I mean, we must get married at once. Married, Mr. Worthing? Surely you know that I love you. And you've led me to believe that you're not absolutely indifferent to me. I adore you. But you haven't proposed to me yet. Well. May I propose to you now? Oh, I think this is an admirable opportunity. But in order to spare you any possible disappointment. I think it only fair to tell you, quite frankly, beforehand, that I'm totally determined to accept you. Gwendolyn. Yes, Mr. Wooden, do you have something to say to me? Will you marry me? Of course I will, my darling. And how long you have been in getting to it. I don't think that you've had very much practice in how to propose. I've never loved anyone in the world but you. I hope that after we marry, you'll always look at me just like this. Especially in front of other people. <laughs> How are you all? Well, obviously, uh, not as happy as you two are. <laughs> well, George, you know, this week I've been pursued by Mark Antony uh -huh. and romanced by Henry Higgins, loved by Henry V, and I was just proposed to 
by Ernest Worthing. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Don't you think I'm just about the luckiest girl in town? Listen, not only do I think so, but most of the uh, women in town think so too, may I say? <laughs> well, they had their chance. <laughs> Probably most of them couldn't stand the excitement. <laughs> I, I don't think, I don't know if you've heard or not, but I've been asked to direct the next play. George, that's wonderful. Thank you. I, uh, I was just wondering if you two might be available for the cast. Who are we this time? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.